the so-called gender paradox. And that's a very interesting thing because it's really put their tails in a knot in Scandinavia. And, and that makes sense because the Scandinavians are going to have to deal with this first because they've gone the farthest down the road for like making their society gender equal. Yeah, but explain that to people yeah, if they don't mind. I will, I will. Okay, so, so imagine first of all that there's two kinds of equality that you might pursue. One would be equality of opportunity. And so that would mean that, um, you know, there's there's wide range of talent across people regardless of their type, whatever that might be, sex, gender, race, ethnicity. There's There's talent distributed everywhere. And it's a kind of a truism, and I would say a, a truism of the West in the deepest sense that each of the individuals within those groups should be put in a position where they their talents are they're encouraged to manifest those talents partly because that would be good for them spiritually and psychologically but also because that would be of obvious benefit to the community so for me equality uh, and gender equality is very very important for me also when we talk about gender equality it's important for me to learn my daughter that her mom uh, uh, can lead and show the way and her dad can hug and kiss her and show feelings and I think that's something very important for the, the, the hoods where kids grow up to show feelings, to, to have these gender equality discussions, to show her a way of opportunities and to strive forward and it's important both for uh, lonely men and lonely young men but also for women that feel this, uh, this uh, roof of glass uh, they need to to fight and to to struggle the roof of glass to yeah to be uh, successful in their lives. Agreeable people, especially if they're really agreeable, are so agreeable that they often don't even know what they want because they're so accustomed to living for other people. If you ask a disagreeable person what what he wants, say or she wants, they'll tell you right away. They they know it's like this is what I want and this is how I'm going to get it. But agreeable people, they're so accustomed to living for other people and to finding out what other people want and to trying to make them comfortable and so forth that it's harder for them to find a sense of their own desires as they move through life. And look, there's situations where that's advantageous, but it's certainly not advantageous if you're going to try to uh, forge yourself a career. That just doesn't work at all. And one of the things you have to be careful of if you're agreeable is not to be exploited because you'll line up to be exploited. Say what you think, tell the truth about what you think. There's gonna be things you think that you think are nasty and harsh, and they probably are nasty and harsh, but they're also probably true. And you need to bring those up to the forefront and deliver the message. And it's not straightforward at all because agreeable people do not like conflict. In order to be able to think you have to risk being offensive, I mean, look at the conversation we're having right now, you know, like you're certainly willing to risk offending me in the pursuit of truth, why should you have the right to do that? The overwhelming proportion of people who are in prisons are male. Now do you want to equalize that just out of curiosity, what about bricklayers? They're 99. Male and the, and we've got about three quarters of the population now in universities in the humanities and social sciences, are female. Are we going to equalize that? And men, men work more longer hours. They work more dangerous jobs. They're more likely to move. They're more likely to work outside. They're more likely to participate in jobs in the STEM fields that are scalable. They make more money for those reasons. And that's all hidden under the idea that the reason that men and women make different amounts of money is because of their gender. Right, I mean, talent's rare, which people don't understand. There's lots of different kinds of talent. But, it's, but in each domain, it's rare. And so it's to everyone's benefit to exploit talented people to the maximal possible degree. So even if you're just selfish, you'd want to push for equality of opportunity because the more talented people there are out there, the more cool stuff you get to have. And hopefully the, the, the more diverse and interesting your life is. So, so you can pursue equality of opportunity um, policies. And the Scandinavians have done that, especially trying to knock down barriers for women in the workplace and by all accounts by all standard theories the scandinavian countries and places like 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 the netherlands canada to to a slightly lesser degree um have done a have gone farther than any other countries in pursuing those um policies 
part of the consequence of that is that some of the differences between men and women have been um, minimized. So obviously there's far more women in the workplace than there were 40 years ago. And in many occupations, there's actually dominance by women. There's dominance in the universities, there's dominance in the healthcare fields. And so women have poured into the workplace. And hypothetically, there's problems with that because it's put a lot of stress on family structure. But hypothetically, that's for the best. And because it gives people a broader range of choices and it gives everyone access to more talent so and then also if you look around the world you see that one of the best predictors of of the probability of economic development in developing countries is their attitude is the attitude in those countries towards equal rights for women and it looks causal the more positively the country is predisposed to female rights the more likely they are to develop economic I think that equality of opportunity is a perfectly reasonable proposition. I mean, I have a daughter and a wife. I do everything I put, and many, many female clients and who I've consulted with and helped, and, and in many cases uh, accelerated, helped accelerate the development of their career tremendously. It's obviously of great utility to encourage forward striving in, in young people and people in general. That, that, but, that's but, not but, the issue in the least. The, the why, issue why is the outcome. Think... Yeah, well, then why do you think uh, the, the outcome uh, and these countries where the outcome is, is, is more equal, why do you think that leads to a bigger differences? Between oh, sexes? because there's only two reasons that men and women differ. One is cultural and the other is biological. And if you minimize the cultural differences, you maximize the biological differences. So I know everyone's shocked when they hear this. This isn't shocking news. People have known this in the scientific community for at least 25 years. And it's been replicated in the last month three times in three separate samples, including in Science, which is the world's greatest scientific magazine by a large margin. And it isn't a small effect, it's a huge effect. There's no possible way that you could ever regulate a society so tightly that every single one of those groups was equally represented in every single one of those occupations at every single level of the hierarchy. Most working class people, let's say, are far more irritated with the intellectual elite than they are with the wealthy elite. And that's because they think they could become wealthy, and they could, but they don't think they could become part of the intellectual elite. And it isn't obvious to me that the intellectual elite, so those would be the liberal left-leaning types that dominate the media and academia, are particularly um, positive in their, in their attitudes towards the typical working class person. I think they're prejudiced and elitist. I do believe that that's the case. And I think they're also, um, what would you call it, patronizing. And so they're much more concerned with the 1% who are the cognitive elite than they are the 1% who are the economic elite, because at least they think that's a game they could play.